Hi, my name is Rachel Black with the Asset Building Program of the New America Foundation, and joining me is Matt Unrath from Wider Opportunities for Women. We have just concluded an event that we called uh, Poverty, Inequality, Mobility, Oh My, and we are asking our panelists, including Matt, how are people really doing since the Great Recession? And you have produced um, a way of evaluating that. So tell us about BEST and sure. how people are doing according to that metric. Sure, so Wider Opportunities for Women um, has, uh, for over 10 years now, tried to produce a budget standard that gets a, uh, provides a sense of how families are doing against um, a normative understanding of what need is. Um, so we look at the accurate, the true costs of basic expenses for um, people who are in the workforce and their families. So we've produced a new measure called the Basic Economic Security Tables, which looks at the cost of basic expenses plus the, the cost of saving for retirement emergencies for over 420 different family types uh, across the country. So. Um, as well as looking at the value of employment-based benefits for those families as well. So we produce uh, about 800 tables or over 800 tables for um, every county and every state in the country, looking at what um, what are the true costs, again, the basic expenses that families face, mm -hmm. and then deducing from those costs, what are the incomes that families need to, to earn to cover all of those basic expenses? And again, put a little bit of money away for emergencies and retirement. And uh, meeting that, that, uh, that income need, we label as economic security. And Matt, how is this different from poverty and how it is what you're considering um, both in terms of income and expenses uh, differ from the threshold that census uses? Sure. So the census uh, threshold is um, a relatively archaic measure. It's uh, about 40 it's to 50 years old. It's isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and they look at the, um, the cost of a food budget. Um, a basic low cost food budget and they multiply that value by three and that's the income level that they define as poverty. Is that as um, arbitrary as it sounds? It's that's as arbitrary as it sounds to a degree. In the 1960s uh, the food budget did constitute something something close to a third of a family's budget but that's no longer the case and our best actually points to that. The, the best points to um, housing, transportation, and child care, which didn't actually make up that much of a budget about 50 years ago, now make up um, a large majority of a family's budget. Um, but we're measuring something different than poverty. We're measuring economic security. Can people meet all of their basic expenses um, and, and live a healthy, productive life, um, be a fully a part of the workforce, and put a little bit of money away for, for retirement? So poverty and deprivation is one thing and should be measured and understood. Economic security uh, is, is something else. So I understand that WOW has just come out with a new report we have that indeed. looks at different demographic groups through the lens of the best tables. Uh, what are some of the key findings from that report? Sure. So when uh, when you produce a measure of, of income need and you're trying to label what economic security is, the question uh, needs to be answered, right? How many people actually reach that level? So um, for a single worker in the United States, it costs about $30,000 a year to make ends meet. For a family of four, it's close to $70,000. Um, and again, we're measuring a pretty baseline understanding of, of what uh, need is, so a pretty bare bones budget. Um, so based on those income thresholds, we compared those to uh, 2009 census data and found that of all the families that have a respective best table that go along with their, their family makeup, 45% of all Americans lack economic security as we define it. Um, the problem is, of course, as it usually is, much worse for women and uh, people of color. Um, for example, uh, Hispanic uh, single mothers um, Ninety-one percent of them lack economic security. Um, so those are—it's pretty stark data. It's pretty—it's um, pretty—it uh, presents a significant challenge for us in terms of our policy responses. Um, so, uh, well, let's yeah. go with that. You sure. have helped uh, paint a very stark picture right. about the scale of the problem. Uh, help us understand the scale of the policy response that's going to be um, required to help move that needle. Sure. So, um, as I said, nearly half of the country lacks economic security as we define it. So we're talking about a much different population um, than those who might fall below the federal poverty level. So increased funding for social services that are only targeted towards people who earn less than, say, $10,000 a year are not going to help all of those families who are just scraping by, just getting by paycheck to paycheck, uh, and are one financial, you know, one financial um problem away from catastrophe, those programs aren't going to help them become more economically secure. So we need to think outside of the context of, um, again, basic social services mm -hmm. and look at policies and programs that are going to help people um, deal with their biggest expenses. Um, so 
being creative and thinking about radically uh, expanding transportation infrastructure that people can um, get to work via public transportation and not can avoid the high cost of, of owning a car. Um, family friendly workplace policies are extremely important so that people actually have the flexibility to work in a job um, that might be different hours but might pay, pay higher wages. Um, and then uh, we really need to look at um, making asset building programs more progressive so that they're targeted towards low-income families that really have difficulty um, saving for emergencies in retirement because the costs of housing and transportation and child care are so high. That's great. And um, you do have a couple of line items in the BEST Index, uh, both for precautionary savings as well as retirement and other forms. Mm -hmm. Given the constraints that you outline mm -hmm. uh, in the rest of the BEST, um, how uh, how do you expect that families are going to be able to um, dedicate part of their limited resources to towards, towards yeah, yeah towards non immediate needs? Right, um, it's a it's a lot to ask for when a family really is um, having trouble just paying their bills. How can you? Um, it's it's difficult to think of how they might be able to adequately save for retirement, which could be 30, 40 years away. Um, uh, and it's a large question with not a simple answer. Um, I think that uh, there's certainly a large part of the federal budget that can that's devoted to asset building. Again, that's um, more towards those in the upper end of the income spectrum. Um, but creating, for example, um, universal child savings accounts so that families can start thinking about um, how to help uh, their child get into post-secondary education, which is increasingly more important for um, later job prospects, um, or helping low-income families gain bank accounts or, or mm -hmm. retirement accounts and, and have that be um, a part of their thinking in their budget. Because uh, in the best, uh, savings and asset building represent only 3 to 6% of a family budget. So it's a relatively modest amount compared to these other expenses. It's something that doesn't seem like an enormous task when looking at just the, the breakdown of family expenses. Again, it's, it's really hard to think about saving for retirement when you can't pay your rent. Um, uh, but if we can structure policies and programs that might incentivize families to, to start thinking about that as an important economic security strategy, um, that, can, that can go a long way. And that's really helpful to say that in our own work, we see that really having access to the same um, accounts and incentives that are available to people higher up on the mm -hmm. income scale um, really become core determinants of whether or not people lower on the income scale can save too. Right. Um, so it really is about um, targeted policy, not whether or not low-income families can save, because we know that they can. They can, exactly. They just have to uh, have the vehicles and policies in place um, and the incomes to be able to do it. So we still, even within the asset building field, we still need to emphasize the importance of, of good jobs and having people have access to incomes that can support a family and allow for, for asset building as well. Well, Matt, where can we go to find out more information about the best? Our website, wowonline.org. Um, if you look up the Family Economic Security Program or our Basic Economic Security Tables Initiative, you can find our report, um, which is available nationally, as well as um, for the eight states that we've released the, the best for so far. And uh, we just released, again, our demographic analyses. And that's all also available on our website. Great, so, thank you. Yeah. And for a catalog of policy ideas that uh, span the range of short-term savings um, policies and programs to those for retirement and longer-term purposes, you can check out uh, the Asset Buildings Program Asset Agenda 2011, which you can find on our website, which is assets.newamerica.net. Thank you.